What's going on guys? Matt here, going live, and today we're talking about online arbitrage FBA step-by-step. -step. Before I do that, go, I just want to show this really quick. This is pretty awesome. One of the students uh, hit $60,000 in 30 days. So proud of him, man. That's friggin' awesome. So um, stick around to the uh, end of this video, guys, because I'm really going to lay it out step-by-step, -step, and you're probably wondering, why I have sunglasses on? Um, I, I'm actually going to step outside here uh, in a little bit here, and... Uh, let me know if you're watching this on Facebook Live. We have a Facebook group. We have a lot of people here in the Facebook group if you're watching this. Let me know uh, where you're coming in from and say hi so uh, we, we can say hi back. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, super excited, guys, um, for the information that we're going to be talking about here. We're talking about online arbitrage, uh, FBA, step-by-step, -step, okay? Now, depending on where you are in the process, you could be in many different places. Maybe you... Um, are just looking into selling on Amazon. Or maybe you are selling on Amazon already, or maybe you're a veteran and you've been selling on Amazon for a while. You know, it doesn't matter what your background is or what your experience is. Um, you know, we have, I have students, okay, Sherry and I have students that we brought in that have varying levels of experience and varying levels of backgrounds. And we even have people who come in, not only from the United States, but from various countries who want to learn uh, online arbitrage. And the reason being is because, uh, well, I'm actually going to talk about that uh, when I when I explain this. So let's get into that. You know, let's go ahead and talk about why online arbitrage. So there's different ways to sell on Amazon, Okay. Different, many different ways to sell on Amazon. Like literally, people talk about drop shipping. They talk about retail arbitrage. They talk about online arbitrage. They talk about private label. They talk about liquidation. Talk about wholesale. Guys, there's so many ways to do it. Um, and ultimately, you know, I suggest that you do the way that calls to you. You know, what calls to you? Now, for us, online arbitrage called to us because, you know, for a lot of people, maybe you don't know like our background, Sherry and I, we got started um, selling on Amazon back in uh, 2013, 2014, around there. And the reason being was because we had failed for a solid year and a half in network marketing, trying to make it. And every month we just kept going deeper into debt. And we were finally, we were looking for something. We wanted something to actually work, something that, you know, we could buy or you know sell something that people actually already said that they wanted we didn't have to recruit anybody we didn't have to spend time on facebook messenger going back and forth or do any kind of weird you know marketing tactics tactics or anything like that and uh because we failed horribly at it right so we were looking for something that we could be off camera that we could do part-time you know and uh that would actually work you know so um that's how we discovered online arbitrage and really at first what we were doing is we were just like doing everything. We were doing retail arbitrage, private label, like anything that, you know, liquidation. We tried like anything that we could think of that would actually work, you know, and we failed, uh, you know, just so you know, like we started out, we had some results, but then we had our account get shut down. And why did our account get shut down? Because we did stupid stuff about buying stuff on eBay, doing stuff that we thought that, you know, was the right thing to do, right? And, you know, the reality is I get all these notifications on my phone. Uh, sorry about that. So, you know, the reality is, um, we, you know, uh, tried this and we tried that. And what we, what we did is we sat down, we looked at ourselves, we said, okay, look, here's what we want. What we want is we want to be able to be at home, right? We wanted to build something that could build pretty fast that we wouldn't have to wait like a long time, like importing from China. Right. And we wanted to be with terms of service. So we didn't have to worry about our account getting shut down. Uh, we wanted stability, right? And, uh, you know, so we really looked at that because I used to, what I used to do is I used to travel and I'd go like, uh, take these big, long road trips into, into Colorado. You know, I live here in Utah and I would go take these big, long road trips into Colorado and Nevada and I'd sleep in the van and I would buy a bunch of product, you know, going to managers and negotiating with managers. And, um, I had like, I would be like sleeping on like, uh, pillows, of like uh, diapers, you know, things that I had product, you know, that's, I was sleeping on the product, right? So uh, I experienced that and I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to have to like go out and about to actually find product. I'd rather have the product just come to me. 
and I wanted to do it. I wanted to be able to be able to build a business quickly too, right? So I knew that like arbitrage is one of the best ways to do that because arbitrage is all about finding these price differences, price differences between a product that's say selling at Kmart or Target or Walmart and it's selling for four times, five times more on Amazon. And then with the FBA, you know, all we do is we buy the products, we send it in Amazon's warehouse, we touch it one time, and then Amazon ships it to the customer on our behalf, right? So the automation of it is what we were looking for. The ability to, you know, be able to do it like part-time and be able to generate an income that makes money while you sleep. Now, I know a lot of people talk about that and you know, a lot of people are skeptical about making money while you sleep. And, you know, it, 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 it could you really build in a business that is automated and, you know, not have to necessarily be there and still making money? Well, yes and no. Right. Yes and no. So when we first started, you know, we um, uh, were doing everything ourselves. Like we go buy the product. Right. We go online and, you know, on the computer, buy the product, have it shipped to our house. Our house was like filled with friggin boxes up the wazoo, for, like the kitchen, the living room, like dining room. Everything was filled with boxes. We pick it, pack it, ship it in Amazon's warehouse. Right. And that was like the vast majority of activity, right? Buying stuff and shipping stuff in Amazon's warehouse. And the more that you're buying, the more that you're going to sell, you know? So um, we looked at that and we said, gosh, we are working like a ton, right? How could we outsource this? So we're not doing everything on our own. And then the first thing we did is we, you know, hired somebody to help us do the prepping. So we didn't have to do all the prepping ourselves, right? And that saved us some time. And what that did is it allowed us to have more time to be buying more product because that's how you should be doing it. You said what you should be doing. You should be buying more product. So, um, uh, so that's what I did. I bought more product and then the sales increased. Right. Uh, and then I was like, okay, well, how do we get this even further? Well, what if I actually hired somebody to do the buying of the product for me? Woo. Boy, that's a scary thing, right? <laughs> so we did that. So we had hired somebody to go buy our, our product for us. So now you have somebody shipping your product for you. So you have somebody buying your product for you. Um, and then Amazon's taking care of the shipping to the customer. You know, you've really reduced your time inside the business. And it really takes a while to kind of get there though, right? You got to scale, right? I always recommend if you're starting out to do everything yourself, get involved in the task yourself. Uh, I had a qu question said, hey, Matt, been following for a while here from Michigan. Hey, welcome. Welcome, Josh. Awesome. Um, okay, so... Um, so yeah, so I like I said, I want to break this down to you guys step by step. So you know, um, like I like I had said, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, like if we were thinking about steps, right? And we're if we were thinking about building a castle or building a home or building a skyscraper, right? We wouldn't start with the top; we'd start with the bottom, the foundation. Okay, that's how we'd start. And the foundation is, well, I would say a combination of mindset and skill set, right? Have the mindset that you're going to be in this for the long haul that this is a business and that this 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 takes time to build, right? If you have the mindset that like, I'm gonna get rich overnight, you know, you're probably not gonna do so well uh, in this. You know, with students that we've seen the results with, that the ones that have 100% commitment, they stick with it, they keep going, and they have big dreams, big vision, and they just keep going. So that's a mindset, right? Just briefly, I mean, I could go on and on about the mindset, right? But now the skill set, okay? Skill set is, Learning the ideas, the principles, the things that we talk about. What we do, buy products, sell products, uh, repricing, account management, um, all the tasks that go involved inside of running an Amazon FBA business. And to think that you're going to learn all these skill sets all at once, come on. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's unrealistic, you know. And it's the same, and it goes back to the mindset, right? So, have the idea and the vision that you're going to get an MBA and FBA, <clears throat> right? And if you're going to school for something, what would you do? Well, you probably, you know, get all the books and the trainings that you need, and then you just start studying and learning, right? And then you know that eventually you're going to have your doctorate in what you do. So, you know, understand that this is no different, right? There's some things to learn. There's some, some principles to understand. It's no different. And so understanding that, okay? So now step one would be, um, I would say, creating your first shipment. You know, that's the ultimate thing. Create your first shipment, right? Because if you can create your first shipment into Amazon, then you can create another one. And then you can create another one. You can create another one, right? <clears throat> so for your first shipment, I'm going to recommend, um, I always tell people at least 40 items, you know, and that's, you know, if you have the same item, you know, you could probably get away with 10, but that's called a... 
a uh, case pack shipment. But if you have multiple different items, different SKUs and stuff like that, probably at least 40, 150 is probably better, right? Somewhere in there. Um, but you want to have multiple different items because people say, well, you know, if you're shipping all this stuff into Amazon, isn't it actually cost more money? Well, you're actually splitting the cost of these individual items inside your shipment. So let's say if I had 40 gidgets inside a box and I send that into Amazon's warehouse and the, the Amazon has a discount rate with UPS. So let's say it costs 20 bucks for that box to get sent in. That $20 is going to be split amongst, let's say, I think I said 40 items. So that's like uh, 50, what is that? 50 cents an item. Is that right? You know, to ship it into Amazon's warehouse. So actually it's not that expensive. Okay. Um, and especially if you're, you, you know, these gadgets, you got them for a good price and you're selling for a good price, right? Cause, uh, you know, once they get there, Amazon's going to do, you know, take out, uh, what's called FBA fees when they sell. So that is a 15% commission and then a pick and pack fee. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, uh, so that's basically, you know, what I do, your first shipment. Okay. Now you've created your first shipment. Now you kind of want to look at like, okay, what did I learn from that? And how can I scale this? So what I want to do, what you want to do is then um, you want to sell a bunch of stuff. You know, you think about it like an Amazon FBA business, you know, a lot of people don't understand when they're getting in this business. You know, it is a very much, it requires a lot of capital to really get it big and growing. Now I have students that started out with like 800 bucks or a thousand bucks, right? But the key is they don't stay there. <laughs> you know, you, you're not going to be able to do much with that kind of capital as far as building and building it. You really got to to get at the level to where you want to be actually able to make income to where you could like, you know, step away from the business, like step away from your job and be able to rely on income from the actual business. I tell people you want to be spending about a thousand, I would say probably at least a thousand dollars a day on inventory, a thousand dollars a day. It's what you're spending. Okay. Now it's, it might seem scary. Like, oh my gosh, it's spending a thousand bucks a day, but literally that's what it takes. It's a very much a cash rich business. Now where you start, you start with whatever you've got, 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, $2,000. Okay. <clears throat> and then I recommend that you reinvest that back into inventory so that, um, you know, because, you know, as you're getting sales that Amazon pays you, you take that money, keep going, keep going, build up like a snowball, like an avalanche, right? To eventually where you get to the point where you can spend thousand dollars a day easily. And I know that sounds weird, but that's really like how it starts because, um, you know, I never dreamed that we would be spending like thousand bucks a day. We had one day where we spent $12,000 in a single day on inventory. Okay. And I had to check my shorts afterwards. Cause I was like, holy shit, I just spent $12,000 in a single day on inventory. Um, but you know, it, it, it's kind of how it works. You make money when you buy, you make money when you buy as an Amazon seller. So <clears throat> let's see what you guys got here. Any questions or comments so far? I appreciate you guys are watching. If you're watching, just again, let me know where you're coming in from and uh, let me know. Pretty awesome guy. Definitely listen and take notes from the advice and stories he provides from the lessons. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, cool. So now what? Okay. Well, now that you've, you know, getting to the point where you're spending a thousand bucks a day, <laughs> there's still steps beyond that, right? Because if you're not careful, you're going to be become drained, right? Because uh, you're, you're going to get like exhausted, right? And, and, and nobody should expect you to work every single day of the week, you know? So in order to scale, in order to really grow from there, you, you basically have to get to a point where you actually do need a team. You need a team in order to scale. So, you know, some of our students who are reaching, you know, $50,000, $100,000 a month, you know, a lot of them have teams in place. You know, you really, because at that point you're basically like, okay, I can't, I can't do it all on my own. And I would go nuts trying to do it all on my own. So you want to build like your own like shipping center. You want to build your own sourcing, you know, people who are actually sourcing products. You can do that like hiring folks from the Philippines to source from you using your credit card. I know it sounds scary, but you know, that's, that's the way you could do it, right? Just people that you can trust. Okay. Um, but we hire people in the United States to actually do our sourcing from us. Okay. And with them spending and buying product and you spending and buying product, now you can really start to scale. Now you can really start to gain even more traction, even more momentum. Okay. <clears throat> now, as far as the, the shipping, because the more stuff that you buy, the more stuff you're going to have to ship into Amazon's warehouse. And you don't want to take away time from the shipping. So a couple ways you can do it. One is you can get what's called a prep center. 
Uh, prep center is like a location in a tax-free state. I recommend tax-free state prep center, like Oregon, New Hampshire, Delaware, uh, Montana. These are all tax-free states, okay? And uh, inside these states, the, the prep centers, what they can do is they can actually ship into Amazon's warehouse for you. And yes, they do charge a fee for that, okay? But here's the cool th thing is if you're not paying sales tax, you can use the savings of what you'd be paying on sales tax to help cover the cost of the prep center of sending the items into Amazon's warehouse for you, okay? Now you're starting to get somewhere because you no longer have to do the shipping. Now, if you don't want to use a prep center, it's fine. You can you, you can hire a team to do the, the shipping um, into Amazon's warehouse for you. That works too, okay? So either way is fine as long as you are outsourcing that because, and you know, and again, to get to outsourcing, you'd have to get to the point where you're ready for outsourcing. I would recommend doing it all on your own learning every single task, okay? So now, you've got somebody prepping for you, you've got somebody shipping for you, you've got somebody sourcing for you. Guys, this is where it starts to get exciting, okay? Now, there's other tasks though, right? Because all this product is sitting in here and a lot of people think, oh, if I, if I plan on selling it for 150, it's just gonna sell for 150. Guys, it doesn't work like that. You know, there's so many competitors with arbitrage, there's so many sellers selling the exact same thing. So how the heck, do you still sell it with so many friggin' sellers selling the same thing? Well, the answer is uh, you're gonna use a tool called a repricer, a repricer. Now, what a repricer does is <clears throat> it is automatically finding the price of the buy box for the product. So it may not sell for 150, but let's say you set your repricer at 120. Well, guess what? That product can now sell at 120. And if you bought it for 50, you're still making a great profit on that item, right? So it's fine. And by the way, if you sold it for 120 and you had to pay a prep center to ship it into Amazon's warehouse plus the fees of shipping it into Amazon, which, you know, if it's, let's say, 50 cents an item, um, it's still very profitable, okay, even after Amazon fees and, and all that, okay? So that's why you want to make sure that you're selling stuff at at least a two times, three times, four times markup, okay? Because those fees do add up, right? So... Um, yeah, it's, it's very, uh, critical that you do that. Okay. Now reason people ask all the time, they say, well, how come you don't do drop shipping? You know, wouldn't it be just easier to just, you know, um, have somebody, uh, else, you know, like, like, like you could just list it on Amazon and then sell it. And then you just go to Walmart and then buy it and then have Walmart ship it to the customer guys. Amazon is all about the customer experience. Do you think they're going to be happy if they think they're buying from Amazon and then they get a customer box with Walmart shipping label on it? No, they're going to complain to Amazon and that's going to, then it's going to come back to you. Okay. That is against terms of service by the way. And that makes sense. Okay. So I did the drop shipping thing and it was a nightmare. Okay. You know, customers complaining, about you know getting stuff that they didn't order, okay? So we recommend FBA, okay? So um, <clears throat> now uh, you've got a price. Now the other part of it too is what's called account management. Now it's not the fun, sexy part of it, um, but there are tasks inside of an Amazon business, right? There is you know sometimes there's like IP complaints to handle, or sometimes there is um, which is, stands for intellectual property, by the way. Um, you know, sometimes there is, you know, products that you should have been paid for or reimbursed for that Amazon didn't reimburse you for. So somebody needs to take care of that kind of thing, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, somebody needs to answer questions sometimes, occasionally. You don't get a lot of questions, but occasionally it happens. So that's, a, that's a kind of the account management side of it because Amazon with their FBA program is going to handle a lot of the customer service for you, which is nice. Um, but there's still like some account management things to do inside the back end of your account, just making sure that you have a healthy account that you're in for the long term. And that is another task that you're gonna wanna learn so that you can outsource. And that definitely could be outsourced with somebody in the Philippines. Um, <clears throat> and so, but guys, you know, the question is, you know, you're like, gosh, is it all worth it? Well, you know, ultimately, here's the, here's the vision, right? Here's the vision is that you want a business where, you know, you're you, picture it, like it's, it's eight in the morning, you wake up, you check your phone, and just like your student here, my student here, you see he's got $1,900 in sales. You know, it, it was a $60,000 in sales in the last 30 days, right? And he knows, based on what we're seeing with our students, about 20% profit margin. So if, if that means he's doing about $12,000 profit, right? And, you know, 
And I mean, amazing, right? I mean, you know, it's pretty freaking amazing to have a business and a system working for you like that, where, you know, you could wake up, you know, you snuggle with your spouse and you say, oh man, I love you, baby. I'm so excited, you know, uh, that this is my life, that I have a business that, that works for me, regardless of whether I'm there or not. And you're able to play with your kids or you'll be able to, you know, do the things that you want to do. Maybe you want to take off the day and go for a hike or, you know, plan your next vacation or something like that. Like, you know, I mean, that's the ultimate vision. That's the ultimate dream. Like, that's why we do what we do. Now, is that a guarantee that's going to happen for you? No. You know, for a vast majority of people in the um, home business industry, they don't make it to that far. And and, and, I, and I could talk about why, but that's really not the purpose of this video. Um, <clears throat> But it is possible, okay? And a lot of people are doing it inside of Amazon FBA. Why? Well, because they have a vehicle. They're providing traffic loaded with buyers, okay? And you all, all you have to do is find products that they want to buy. So all you're doing is matching up their desire to buy something, and then you have what it is that they want. When you have that combination, sales are easy, right? Sales are easy when you have that combination. So... That's why so many people are doing so well with the Amazon FBA model, you know, and so why, you know, not everybody reaches that level, right? You know, I'm not going to lie to you. Like a lot of people aren't reaching $60,000, $100,000 in sales, you know, but some people reach, you know, a few thousand sales, you know, $5,000, $10,000 in sales in a month, you know, <clears throat> and think about what that is. That's an extra thousand, $2,000 in profit in a month. And, you know, for a lot of people, that would be nice. That would be a nice little extra income. So, you know, there's varying levels, varying ways of doing it. But that basically, that I just wanted to, you know, chime that up into, you know, and uh, the title of the video is M uh, Online Arbitrage Step-by-Step. Step. So, you know, I, you know, hopefully that gives you some examples. So if you want to see some examples of, I brought some, some products here, uh, some things that like uh, I've showed in previous videos. Like I, ha I keep this box around just to show some examples. So this is like a Back to the Future what the frick is this? It's a, a lighter adapter car charger. It's a car charger. I had to figure out what this is. So, you know, some examples of, uh, of things here. Uh, and by the way, if you guys have questions, you know, feel free to post. Um, let us know. Um, this is like a, like a kind of like a Lego set, like a tech you know, Lego set. So you see, it's just all kinds of various items. You know, somebody was asking, well, how do you know which find items to find? Well, we do that through... Um, a couple of different ways. We use a software. It's called Tactical Arbitrage. I'll leave a link there below in the description. You get a 10 day trial. Um, we use that software a lot. And basically what Tactical Arbitrage does is it scans the internet and it looks for price differences <coughs> um, of products that, uh, you know, are selling on Amazon. And then they're also selling at like retailers. And so we look for those and those products already, we already know that they're selling on Amazon. That's the thing. You don't want to buy stuff that <coughs> you don't know if it's going to sell or not. Okay, and that's why when I was talking about private label earlier, I was like, you know, a lot of people lose their shirts. We have a lot of people lose their shirts selling private label because they're, they don't really know how it works yet. And they were just told, you know, just go find something from China and just bring it over. But without an existing sales history on that particular item or any kind of research, um, and, you know, it can, be, it can be honestly financially dangerous. So you want to make sure that what you're selling, um, we, that's why we recommend arbitrage is because you know, this is another example some kind of mineral complex um with a bag you can tell like i don't i'm not a chick so like i don't know about i don't really know about much about the stuff i'm selling sometimes um but um yeah so you know what i was saying though is it, it, it we recommend that people start where it's all about building confidence you know that's what most people need online they need confidence so if I'm thinking about confidence, well, I want to help somebody sell something that's already selling, you know, help them get that first sale, you know, boom, first sale, Amazon, ship the item you sold. That's a beautiful email, right? Because if you're selling an existing product that already has sales history, you're much more likely to sell in your first week than you are to find, um, do all the research and then go back and forth with a supplier in China, which takes months. And then, you know, finally get a sample. The sample wasn't right. Send it back. Get another sample. I mean, guys, you know, the whole process, don't get me wrong. I mean, I think that eventually you want to get there. But if you're not there, then, you know, then I believe that arbitrage is really going to be the best way 
for you to get started and actually see some results and get that success, which most people need so desperately. Hey, from Canada, welcome, awesome. Yeah, okay. So does that make sense? So, you know, here's some vitamins. You know, people were asking, well, you know, uh, vitamins, yes, absolutely vitamins because these are bundles, right? Bundles, some, you know, that's a tip for you guys. You wanna find bundles. So if you're looking for products to sell, you know, sometimes if you combine a, one product that's selling with another product that's already selling, um, that's where, you know, the real reward can be and you can find yourself uh, maybe a little bit separate from the competition, which is always good. That's always what I recommend to do. You're kind of away from the competition, but not too far that it's so out there that it's never been sold before. So you want to find the happy medium. Um, but yeah, so what basically we do is use that software. It's called Tactical Arbitrage and it scans the internet and finds those price differences. And then the other tool that we recommend is product lists. Um, a lot of you guys seen my previous videos. In fact, I'll leave a video if you're watching this uh, on YouTube in the description. <clears throat> uh, I just show sourcing from a product list. Now, lists are great, and we have people that stay on the list who's been on there for like over a year now uh, because it's already curated for you. Those leads, the products that you're trying to find, you know, the stuff like this um, is, is on a list. So it's going to show you like on a spreadsheet. Oh, boom. Here's this item at, you know, iherblife.com, whatever. And you can get it for, you know, 10 bucks and then it's selling on Amazon for 30 bucks. Okay. Now, would you buy just one of them? No, you're going to buy like 10 or 20 of these bad boys, right? So that, that way, you know, um, <clears throat> when they, when you buy them and then you send them to Amazon's warehouse, you know, you're going to get those emails, notifications, Amazon ship the item you sold. And you want to have a, like just a bunch of stuff, but you don't want to go too deep. I wouldn't buy like a thousand of these. Right, I would buy you know maybe ten or depending on sales rank and stuff, <clears throat> so that you know you're not um, going too crazy with that. You know, with uh, uh, what am I trying to say here? You're not going too deep on product. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so yeah, so that's basically how I do it. So you use tactical arbitrage, you use lists, and you just buy. You just buy like friggin' crazy. And, you know, take everything that you have and reinvest it back into the business until it gets to the point where, you know, you can actually live off of the, the income from the business. Okay. <clears throat> and that's basically it, guys. Uh, I couldn't make it any more simple than that. Um, well, hopefully you guys found this useful with the step-by-step -step training. You know, um, I want to make sure that, like, I, I put this out there so that uh, you guys have it and you, and you understand. Ah, it's too bright. Nope. I was going to try to take off my glasses, but... So you guys could see me. Uh, yeah. Any any last questions? I started process, but it requires a lot. If I didn't have so, I abandoned it. Certain have so I abandoned. How do you find the right items to sell? Yeah, hopefully, because um, yeah, that's exactly what I was just asking, answering there. Um, Gordon, you were asking find the right items to sell. Yeah, from lists and tactical arbitrage, which I'll leave a, a link there in there in the uh description as well <laughs> yeah now bruce he asked about the source mogul thing i i guess i have to look into this because uh <laughs> you keep mentioning source mogul <laughs> i don't know i don't know i have to look into that all i know is the tools that we use you know um <clears throat> there's there's a lot of copycats that came out you know from tactical arbitrage um and then, you know, tactical arbitrage is actually like, kind of like copycat from uh, OAX Ray, uh, but they actually improved upon OAX Ray. OAX Ray was like one of the first. But what the thing about, like, about tactical arbitrage is that um, Alex, the Moss, he's the founder of it, he keeps adapting and keeps changing with it because, you know, this, this industry does change, you know, and things do change. So he's, he's up to date with those changes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll leave a, a link there below. So. Awesome, guys. All right, well, I'm going to head out. <clears throat> Appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you're watching this YouTube, so please subscribe to the channel, throw the video a like. Comments are always welcome. Um, you know, let us know what kind of future content you guys want us to do um, in the future so we can get that out to you. Um, and as always, be active in the group so we can see, you know, uh, your results. We want to see your success stories. Hey, you're welcome. And by the way, guys, if you, if, you know, you've talked, you heard me talk about students and results. If you're interested in becoming one of our students, we have a... Um, uh, we have a couple of things. One is you can get our free training, which is resellforprofits.com. Um, but the other thing too, is if you want like our paid training, if you want our access to our, our full on course, 
Um, we have that as well at oaprofits.com, and I'll leave a link there below for that, um, for, for both those resources um, for you guys. Okay? So, all right, guys, take care. Have a good one, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.